No, the title is not clickbait, but yes, we are going to be reverse engineering the FlowGPT API and we're going to be writing a Python wrapper for it. As you can see, it's actually a pretty simple API. It responds with everything pretty simply. I just have to break it all down and make a wrapper for it. But every time we get an error, we're gonna have to restart the entire project. But this got me thinking this would make a really good video idea, so credit this guy for giving me the API, um, but the video idea is actually all mine. <laughs> With all that being said, let's just go ahead and get straight into it. I need to actually open up a uh, project file for this. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to have a testing file where we actually test the uh, wrapper, because remember, we're just going to be having people download uh, the wrapper and then using that wrapper in their project. We can go ahead and just start off with a init uh, function, so we can use that later on. And we're gonna write, we're, we're gonna make it a class. So you initialize the class with all the needed data. I'm not sure if we actually need any data to pass in. We still have to, of course, reverse engineer the API. So I'm gonna open Insomnia and get to work on that, and then I'll update you next time um, I find something important within the uh, API. Now that we have Insomnia open, we can go ahead and go back to FlowGPT and get this and copy it as a curl command. The reason we do this is because we can just open a new request and then paste that in there and it, oh, it doesn't work. But it looked like this curl command didn't really work because of the way uh, of the format that it is. So we're just going to have to copy all these and paste them. So I changed the input and it looks like we got a different response. So it, lo it just literally looks like the data that we're sending is a little bit fucked up. So I'm going to go ahead and fix all of that and we'll see if we can get it to work on Insomnia. I actually ended up opening Burp Suite anyway, um, but the web development tools aren't very, very suited for what I want to do, if that, if that gets the point across. And it's way easier just to open a browser over here. And since we're not logged in to Flow GPT, we can just go straight in there and then uh, start testing it like this. If you're new to API reverse engineering of any type, I recommend you go check out some of my other videos because I, really, I won't really be going in depth on what's happening here, but I will show it. Here, all we're gonna need to do is turn intercept on and then, you know, si search up cy cybersecurity. And those should go through. Here, we can filter all of them uh, and check out what we do and don't need. So we, we can see we have a lot of JSON. As you can see, after intercepting all of the requests, we have a bunch of different things that we can check out. And this is everything from authentication, from me loading up the website, all the way to um, me actually searching up the term and getting responses back. So this should be everything that we actually need. As you can see, here's the actual request that returns the data. And if we send this over to Repeater, I'm sure we can do it one more time and it would work pretty, pretty perfectly. And as you can see, now that I've finally fixed the headers, uh, it now works in Insomnia. So now we're 100% sure that this is working and it's, it's, it's great. We can get the uh, prompts here along with all of the other needed data uh, for each of the prompts. Now, as you can see, I opened up a bunch of different ones. So if we go back to Burp Suite, we should have a bunch of new requests requesting a bunch of new data. So this will also be really cool to check out. I'm pretty sure there's only about three to four different endpoints that will really be useful to the most common people. So I'm only going to do a few of them and I'm also going to post this all on GitHub. So if you want to go check it out, my GitHub is in the description. It's everywhere. It's all it's on. It's in all of my links. Um, it's really just I'm dash hero. It's even in the code uh, right here. You can see there's my GitHub. Go check it out if you want to. It'll be up whenever I finish this video. If you also want to support me, you can go to the description and join my Discord and follow me on all of my other socials. It really helps, and I really appreciate all the support. Not to add, I really like to think about my Discord as a place where everyone can go and ask questions, and anyone or anyone that knows can help you. With all that being said, for a little bit, I'm going to play around with all these requests, see what I can find, and then I'll come back to you guys whenever I have three or four requests that are pretty good, and then we'll start writing actual code. So now that we have a little bit better of an understanding of how the API works and we can actually get a response from it, let's now start implementing it into our Python script. First, I want to go ahead and do a test um, just in the testing file to make sure that I can actually send and receive request. So this is the part where it gets sketchy because if I mess up here, then I have to restart the entire project. And to explain the rules, by reset the entire project, I mean I have to delete all my code and just delete the entire folder overall and restart. Which, I mean, it's 
it's gonna be a pain in the ass to restart all of my code after I've just made it so if there's any errors we we're gonna have a hard time to start off um, let's go ahead and grab the headers we can just get that by generating code and get all of these headers right now so we don't have to uh, do it manually so now that we have all ooh, looks like there's double quotes right there shouldn't be like that so now that we have the headers we actually have to send and receive the request and I'm gonna try and parse through some of the data to see what we can get um, right now from what I know uh, of the response oh, actually it's over here we're in an array and then we move to JSON so just the entire thing is in an array so we're just gonna have to increment increment from zero and I believe there are other arrays in here um, yeah something like this um, and other things just normal things are in an array that's something we're gonna have to write documentation on with that being said let's go ahead and make our response um, our response variable here we can do request dot get and then we're going to grab that endpoint as you can see oh we need to put it in a string we're going to make it an f string and we need to add the queries at the end here we have the url encoded uh, json and we have this batch which i'm not exactly sure what it is but i mean it'll, it'll return the same thing now we need to parse through all that data so to do that we'll just write a simple for loop for x in range or not in range sorry for x in response except we need to go through that array and then we have uh i think it's res response response or return or result i think it's result so from what i'm seeing all of the json is in an array so we're just gonna have to find a way to increment through each of the um ones in the array so here's what we're doing here. We're um, setting this variable to zero, which is going to be the number that we're incrementing for. Uh, there's other ways to do this, but this is just the easiest and safest way since I don't want to restart the entire project. We're looping through all of those values in that uh, JSON. And then for each of these, um, what is this? For each of the prompts, um, we're getting the ID and the created at time. And the only real way to see if it works is to test it and see if we oh no so after looking at it and playing around with it for a little bit i realized my issue and i plan to do better next time um first off this was incrementing the wrong way beforehand i had this um at the beginning which means it would start with one instead of zero not to add i just didn't even need to increment in the first place so i'm pretty sure if i would have went ahead and just did something along these lines if I did something along these lines and reran it again as you can see it works so small little error that I just I don't know what I was thinking but now we've got to delete our entire project small little error I'm a little upset because I've already just started and I'm already having to reset but I mean it is what it is so here's what all of the files look like on the first reset. Yeah, we didn't get very far, so I mean, it's not too big of an issue, though it's still going to suck a little bit. So as you can see, I'm in the same project folder, and I'm just going to go ahead and delete all of those files right there. And as you can see, they're all invalid now, so we've got to completely restart. So I've made all of these new files. I'm pretty sure they're all basically the same thing, and I'm probably going to set them up the same way. Um, but this time, I just have to do everything over again. So now that we have all of that done, uh, we're just going to go ahead and... Um, I guess we can go ahead and start writing the FlowGPT wrapper since we know how the data moves and everything. So I guess we can go ahead and start on that first request, which is going to be... Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Getting those prompts. So in the init function, I'm going to go ahead and just set up all the session data and we're just going to pass that into each and every function as it's needed this will help just with consistency and um it just is cleaner and better <laughs> if you're not familiar with the uh, request library there is a sub library called sessions and this is a way to clean up all of your um you know sessions or requests just so it's a little bit easier for other people to read and for you to use what I plan to do if you guys really like this series and you want to see another video on the FlowGPT, what I want to do is create another um, 
sublibrary to this one right here and make it so it's a little bit easier to get data because I'm only going to be making three or four requests that, you know, search and do all the basic things of the API. Um, so you can still get the data, but it's completely raw data. And um, you could do the same thing by um, calling the website yourself. What I plan to do is make it more specific so you can request it and uh, pick out that data because it's already parsed for you. So we're going to need to URL encode for this to actually work. And I'm, I've never really worked with that in Python, so we're going to be learning something new. And it actually looks like URLib um, actually has something for this, so we're probably just going to use this. Here's what the first raw request looks like. It just returns all of the JSON that it gets from the website, and it's pretty simple. So let's go ahead and test this and see if we have to delete the entire project again. So we can go ahead and just run this, and it should print the response from the website. So let's try it out, and we got an error. So as you can see, we have plenty of errors, and I've tried debugging it, but at this point, I'm going to have to delete it anyway, so let's just go ahead, go ahead and get it over with. So now we're just going to go ahead and restart, make a new class and everything, get all that set up. Um, this is, this is going to suck, really. I'm just now, it's just now setting in that um, I'm, I've gotten too far into this and I have to finish it. <laughs> so I've updated all the code and I'm basically back to where I was last time. And I'm ready to try the code again, so let's go ahead and run. Actually, we need to run our code file properly. So last time, the actual error was, the, the initial first error was for me um, not initializing the class properly, which, how I forgot to do, don't ask me, but we're going to do it right this time. So now that we have it all set up, I have done um, a few checks, and it looks all right. So all we're doing is printing the response. So unless we get a Python error, we're going to be fine. Um, we could get an error from the API, but that doesn't count. Let's go ahead and run it. Or, whoops, here we go, test.py. And that looks like an error code from, oh, status 404. So it looks like maybe the, what? So now um, I figured out that it was sending a post request, not a get request. So. I'm going to try it one more time and it should work. There we go. There's all the data that we're looking for. So now this one is working as it should. So boom, we just have to recreate that um, two more times with the other two requests that we have and we should be good. I'll get back to you guys whenever I want to test those two out. As of for now, I'm just going to start coding and I'm actually going to see if I can find any more endpoints. So I'll see you guys when I update you next. So after reworking the code and overlooking it at least a good 20 to 30 times, um, I got the final little bit of code that I want to start testing. I've looked over this code multiple times and I'm pretty confident that it'll work. Um, we've already got this one working, so it's pretty easy. Um, I just copied the same thing, except the data isn't URL encoded for these requests for some reason. It is only URL encoded for this one, um, as you can see in Insomnia. Uh, you can see in the query, this one is URL encoded, but these two are not. So I just want to go ahead and test both of these functions to make sure they're working. So as you can see, we're testing first the get collections to make sure that it works. So let's just run that. And as you can see, it works perfectly. Um, a little nerve wracking because I don't want to restart now. Like it's kind of getting a little deep. So now we have to test uh, the get featured uh, prompts. Hopefully we won't get an error and have to restart. Um, yep, I'm pretty confident. There we go. Perfect. So as you can see, both of them work. That's a big, big relief. So now that we know all of the uh, requests will work and they will return the proper data, we could stop here and you could make people parse the data themselves. Although I do plan to make it so you can do it on your own, but probably outside of this video. So now that we know all of the requests will work, we now need to, I mean, we could technically just stop here because this is technically most of the API that people will use, although that wouldn't really make much of a good video, would it? I plan to add just a little bit more functionality to this and off of the video, off camera, off everything, I'll continue to add to it, but not within this video because that's risky and I don't want to restart this project again. With that being said, I'm going to implement the proper changes needed to uh, make these work to their full extent. 
and then I'm going to add a few more things and fine tune it so it works properly. And then after that, I'll get back to you guys to uh, test the code. And if it works, then it works. But if it doesn't, then we're probably going to have to restart. I plan to just continue reverse engineering and finding more data on it. And like I said, fine tuning all of this code that we already have and then testing it. And then I'll get back to you guys with an update on what's going to happen. Good morning, you guys. It is now the next day and I was up all night last night and of all this morning working and trying to get this knocked out. Now, as you can see, there is a lot of new updates. We have done a lot. I have just pushed all of the current updates and I'm currently done with it as of for now. I could add on to it, but this is looking pretty good. So there's only really three main public um, endpoints, which is the get featured prompts, the search collections and search prompts. I have a perfect understanding of how it works. Basically, it just increments from zero. Um, you can have multiple kind of pieces of data. The way the website works is it updates. Hold on, let's get a Firefox. Is it updates for every three characters that you put in. With that being said, I just put that and implemented it into these three requests right here. And there's really only two major uh, API endpoints, which is the collections and the prompts. So I've pretty sure I got like all of this working they're basically all the same the only difference is is the search prompts uses the URL encoding and uh, oh maybe this does too oh maybe it doesn't after looking back over insomnia yes we do actually need that because of the data that we're sending um, but with that being said we can go ahead and test each and every one of these show you that they're hopefully working and I don't have to restart all of this because I am done right now so these will be the last three commands that I have to uh, use to work on this. So let's just go ahead and start with searching for a prompt. So let's search for, for some prompts uh, under UI design. Uh, all we have to do is do that. And looks like we got data back. Not a whole lot, but that's still a W. Next, of course, we have to search collections. We're just going to search for the same thing because it doesn't really matter. And there you go. Bunch of different uh, pieces of data. Last but not least, we're going to search for uh, get all the featured prompts. And I actually don't think, yeah, we don't need to pass anything in for this. So we can just get rid of that and work too. Perfect. So it looks like everything is working. The documentation is looking good. Um, so I think we're done with this project and I didn't have to restart again. Thank the Lord. This project was actually really fun and I really did enjoy it. And I'm not gonna lie guys, this has been really difficult because I'm kind of the type of developer who will try out the code immediately after they're done every single time. So for one project that'll take like a week or two, I could run it at least a good two or 3,000 times, right? So only being able to run this project seven, eight, maybe nine times, it sucks. It was really hard to look over my code so many times and just make sure it was right. With that being said, I'm pretty excited to end this video off because I have too much footage and I don't know how I'm going to edit all of it in time. But if you want to check out the GitHub, you can check it out. It's right here. It's um, my GitHub is I'm dash Kuro and the repo name is flow GPT dash API. You can check it out. Completely open source, super fun and easy to work with. I have a lot of documentation, so I mean, you won't have any issues with uh, not understanding how it works. And I literally made a wrapper to clean it up for you. You just have to handle the data. With all that being said, if you want to support me and my dumb project, you can check out the links in the description. Check out all my different socials. I really appreciate it. And if you want to support me even more, you can donate to my Bitcoin or my ETH. doesn't really matter. Um, it just helps support all these projects and helps me buy new cool things. AKA, I want another Raspberry Pi and I want a Flipper Zero. Those are the two next things that I probably will get. Or maybe a bigger Faraday cage. I don't know. Something to make a video on, definitely. But I really hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I hated it. Um, and I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.